weather or not, the weather's good, you should come back next month. I'm excited to share with you the research that I've been doing. Uh, and a lot of this is because of your tax dollars, so I should say thank you. Uh, this is specifically funded by the National Science Foundation, the NSF. And this is a picture of me studying the music of the spheres. <laughs> so here's an outline of my talk. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the Yomer Elohim Yehi or the Yehi or. And I don't know. You guys probably had biblical Hebrew a few years ago, so I'll just remind you that that means let there be light. So I'm going to talk about the uh, cosmology leading to the formation of the first stars. This allegedly, this is the lawyer in me coming out, my client would never have. Anyway, this allegedly happened on Yom Echad, which is Hebrew for day one. So naturally, we call this experiment the D1 experiment. <laughs> After that, I'm going to move on and I'll talk about how the elements were forged in stars, the elements necessary for life. I'll talk a little bit about what stars are, and I'll discuss the nuclear fusion that made the elements that compose our bodies. Carl Sagan we said we are star stuff, and he is right, we are, except for the hydrogen. The hydrogen came from the Big Bang. So part of us is from the Big Bang. It's pretty old. All right, then I'm going to move on to talk about verses 11 and 12. If you haven't guessed yet, this is Genesis chapter 1. It's a little bit long for me to read, but it basically means let there be light. I'll talk about astrobiology. If someone had told me when I was in college that I would be studying astrobiology, I would have laughed at them. Of course, I was in college in the last millennium, so, you know, things were very different. <laughs> This is a really serious subject. There are over a thousand planets that have been identified around other stars. And it's now believed that every star in the galaxy, in our galaxy, has at least one or more planet orbiting around it. So this is a valid scientific question. And I'll talk about, well, allegedly it happened on Yom Shlishi. That's day three in Hebrew. So naturally, we call this experiment the... Uh, D3 experiment. <laughs> We're not very original. All right. My point is that we are trying to answer questions that humanity has been asking for millennia. And it's really humbling to think of ourselves as in a long line of intellectual quest. So that's just a plug for everyone who wants to go into science. And I hope that's everyone here. All right. Let me talk about the cosmology. So this is a cartoon history of the cosmos. We start with the Big Bang. The universe was in very dense, intensely hot. It expands. As it expanded, it cools down. About 400,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe became transparent to light. And this is a picture of the universe at 377,000 years after the Big Bang. Now, before I show you the picture, I want to put that into perspective. In the average life expectancy of a woman in the United States, it's about 81 years, that corresponds to less than the first day of life. So this is before the universe was a day old, if I can anthropomorphize the cosmos. And this is the cosmic microwave background, which we see today. It's the image of what the universe looked like back then. And the red parts are slightly hotter and slightly denser than the blue places. And these dense locations are the seeds for the structure, for the formation of structures such as galaxies and stars within them. Basically, you have a region of space with a slightly higher density, so there's more gravitational attraction towards it. And you get a little bit of a runaway effect. It just keeps collecting more and more stuff to it. So as I said, these fluctuations are the seed for the seeds for the structure that we see around us today. So moving on, about 15 million years after the Big Bang, chemistry kicked in. And a fair portion of my talk is going to be about the chemistry that led to the formation.